I wonder if this uh, sense I'm getting from you of an enormous inner direction and almost inner compulsion, if this created tensions in your family circle, in your larger circle, and I'm thinking specifically of being expelled from Fisk. You get expelled from Fisk and uh, because you, at least the school says, you didn't receive permission from the dean mm -hmm. to go home for Thanksgiving vacation. It's incredible to imagine today oh, that you... Oh, a bunch of other things. Yeah. But, uh -huh. So, I mean, this is something you could have done. You could have gone and asked permission and you could, could have not done those other things. But no. you did those things. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of tension, if any, did this create in your family circle? Well, my grandfather graduated Fisk in 1905, so my grandmother was embarrassed. I mean, there's mm. no question about that. And she came down to Fisk. She took a bus, came down to Fisk, and was like, you know, your grandfather graduated in 1905, and I think you're going to get kicked out. Mm. And I said, yeah, it looks like I'm going to get kicked out. I mean, because you could, you know, we were on a collision course. There's no, no question about that. And uh, I did, you know, and I think the grandmother was uh, not disappointed, but embarrassed. But it's Knoxville, and mm. uh, Knoxville really has always been to me like, oh, yeah, you made a mistake. And you go on. Now my mother, and, and mommy's crazy, and I think it was the first time I realized that she's nuts. My mother said, you know, well, what did she do to you? What did the dean do to you? Because mm -hmm. in mommy's mind, it was all the dean's fault. And mommy's best friend is a woman named Teresa Elliott, who has, has since died. Uh, Teresa was like an, an aunt to me, you know, and was just so close. And Teresa was like, yeah, something wrong with Dean, dean uh, Cheatham. Actually, I saw Ann Cheatham uh, at the um, at the Martin, uh, in the spirit of Martin, at the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. And it was so wonderful because she said, uh, I don't think you know me. And actually, you know, I mean, how long has it been? 30 years. She said, I'm Ann S. Cheatham. And I said, oh my God, you know, what a favor you did me. Mm -hmm. And she laughed. She said, you think so? I said, yeah, I, I do. Because uh, failures are important. And it was a failure. And I wasn't going to fool myself about that. I had to think it through. But no matter what everybody, everybody was being supportive of me because that's, that's the kind of nutty, crazy family I have. But uh, I knew that it was a failure, and I recognized that I had in, indeed embarrassed my grandmother. Though she's not going to ever say anything to me like that, I recognized that that's what I had done. I, I had embarrassed her. And your parents, who surely valued education, must have, what would they think? Well, they got their tuition back. I mean, that was my father wanted his money back. Well, if she's not in school, can I have my tuition back? And he got it. But uh, our family doesn't function that way. I mean, we. Thank God we're not mass murderers, or we'd be mm -hmm. around, you know, mommy be, oh, she's a really good mass murderer. You know, she got 30 people. I mean, we just don't think like that. And I, I grew up in a valuing education, Julian, uh, and you come from a, a background, but val valuing education is not valuing schooling. It's like valuing uh, religion. It's not, you know, loving the church. And so you can't let the preacher keep you from Jesus. You, you know? mm -hmm. I mean, if you can't start to separate those things, so I'm... I would have remained um, educated. At the same I, time, there's a kind of credentialing. There's a credentialing. That many people value yeah. that goes with the formality of education, exactly. which you had, by having this inner direction, you had cut yourself off from I was that endangering. credentialing. Yes. And I, I, I did attend the University of Cincinnati, and I did very well because I'm, I've always been real red, and so I'm at, at UC, which is a hometown, and I had a job at, at Walgreens. It doesn't take you very long to realize whatever life holds, it cannot be Walgreens. Mm -hmm. It just cannot be. And so I knew I needed to go back to school. And so I wrote uh, Fist because if you're going to have a failure, then that's where you have to go to correct it. And I've never, and I'm saying it to you now, and I, I wrote it in Gemini, I never misunderstood that I had done something wrong and stupid. So it was time to get it straightened out. Because I can't go forward if I'm carrying this baggage that always says it wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul Simon has that wonderful song, when something goes wrong, I'm the first to admit it and the last one to know. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you accept responsibility. You know, why I'm glad, let me, you know why I'm glad Martha Stewart's going to jail? Why? Because she knew damn well she was insider trading. And I would have still not cared about that all that much if they hadn't tried to put it off on the kid when she tried to say it was the fault of the assistant to, you know, her assistant, to, it was Douglas Fagnol's fault. I thought, that's trashy. Grown-ups don't put their responsibilities on children. So I knew it was my responsibility to go back to Fisk to admit that it was my fault mm. because Dean Cheatham only did what she thought she should do. She would have had to have been a better person than she was. At the same time, does, didn't Fisk excise the records? No. And remove her, Dean Cheatham's 
uh, critique of you. Sure, but this is going to be of a that new dean. That seems to dean. be the admission that Fisk had some sure. part in this. Sure, they but we had a new dean, uh, uh, Jackie Cowan was the new dean, and she accepted responsibility for Fisk, which had nothing to do, and this is what I'm trying to say to mm. everybody, had nothing to do with my accepting my responsibility that I messed up. Mm. And if you don't do that, you can't go forward. When you mess up, you know, you have to think it through, but you have to accept I mean, Fisk did do something wrong. Uh, Stephen Wright, who's a, a, the president of Fisk, and Mrs. Wright, I did some fundraisers for him with James Farmer. It was fun. I, I said to Dr. Wright, I said, you don't remember me. He said, oh, yeah, I remember you very well. We, we did. We kicked you out of school. He said, I think I'm sorry. I said, I'm not. Because at any point in life, something needs to happen to you that makes you reassess. Mm -hmm. I say that to kids all the time. You know, if you go through school with a four point, if you've always made A's, it, it really means you haven't taken hard subjects. Because if you're always making A's, you need to take something that you don't know anything about. If you never have a risk, you mm -hmm. can't grow from it. And so I'm not, afraid of, I'm not afraid of failure, but I'm not afraid to admit that I'm wrong.